Okay, so straightforward. So we're talking about bookmarking. So uh, I guess you're not, uh, you're familiar with the concept of bookmarking. So bookmarking is just uh, one trying to um, like pen down a page and say, okay, this page, you can share it with your friends. And um, for Shine, it's actually a challenge. It's not something that's easy to do. Um, and it's a major drawback. So they found a way around it. And that's what we're going to be going through today. So what exactly is the basic idea to getting this done? So there's this app that we're going to be using as our example today to check how possible that would be. And um, we would be drawing a little juice figure, which replicates the motion of a pendulum. So um, this app can produce a variety of interesting patterns, which you might want to share. And for you to bookmark it, what happens is this. So um, is my R screen visible? My R uh, studio visible? No. Oh, now, yeah. Okay, so I'll just go straight to the example. That's example one. So I already have the codes. And yeah, so, um, so if we run this, we should get it to what? I think I have one of them here. Okay, so okay, wait, I'm coming. Okay, so let's get this to run. It will be run up. Uh, save selected. Let's go. Okay, now the ticket power is a power cord here, so I have to switch this up. Okay, so um, this is what it looks like, and this is the app. And whenever we make adjustments to when we make changes to the slider, we get a different um, diagram representation. So how exactly does this? um work if you want to bookmark it then um if you want to bookmark it there's just some basic things we do there are about three uh and number one we need to add a bookmark uh, a function bookmark button function to the ui so this generates a button that the user clicks to generate the bookmark um bookmarkable url and um number two we turn the ui into a function we're going to see that very soon um you need to do this because bookmark app have to replay the bookmark values so um, whenever you bookmark the app, what happens in short is that um, the values you maybe changed through the slider will be on the URL. And so whenever you replicate or you, you replicate that URL, it would pick those inputs, those stored inputs in the URL and give you back the same outputs. Um, whoever saved the URL in the first place is presenting. Okay, maybe I should recap. So when you save a bookmark, when you bookmark uh, maybe a page, there's a URL that you generate in the process. The URL contains possible inputs of uh, the UI at that particular point in time. And so that is what is um, regenerated whenever you reuse the URL. So at this point, I will just show that. So, and you had enable bookmarking equals URL to the Shiny app call. So for the next app will be built in. This is it here, and that is, this. So if you notice in the UI place, this is what changed comparing it to this, which is still very normal without the function. The UI um, part of the code does not have the, it's not yet a function. But for this, it is now a function. And we have this included. We have the bookmark button function um, also, um, bookmark button included. Then we also have. Um, Enable bookmarking, enable bookmarking equals URL added so that we can have that um, work out. So I'm running that now and we're going to get the result. So here is it. So whenever I do anything, okay, something is making missing, I can't find my bookmark button. Why is that so? Okay, let me stop this and do it again. I should find my bookmark button there. Okay, let me run the app again. 
Okay, yes, my bookmark button is now there. So any change I make here um, makes the inputs different. So if I come here to bookmark, there's this pop-up that we have here and it tells me, okay, what you did now is you've changed the this um, the slider here. You've changed something at Delta and you've changed something at the damping part. So it gives me something different. Whatever's the input in my slider or whatever's the input here for lens is what you find on the um, bookmarked link. So um, I can copy this and if I want to replicate it, this is all I just need to um, include and I will replicate that same um, display. We just compared the example, the second example, we've seen how we can actually bookmark using this approach, making the UI function, adding um, the bookmark button um, function, then also adding a very important snippet to our to our server side, which is the to the shiny app um, function, which is the enable bookmarking equals URL. With that, we've made our uh, web app bookmarkable. But the only thing you see, you notice is that we now have a bookmark button in our shiny app which you don't see in most websites. So there's another way we can go about it. And um, and what would we do at this? Okay, let's first explain what that links look like. So this is something of that nature, what we just saw. And um, nice to go back there. Yes, so this HTTP is just the, um, I think, um, hypertext something protocol. Um, this is my, uh, I think my IP, is my IP address now? I'm coming, please let me check. I want to be sure so I don't say the wrong thing. Okay, so HTTP is the protocol used to communicate with the app. This will always be HTTP or HTTPS. I think the difference is one is secured and the other is not. Then hardly.shinyapps.io MS, book, MS bookmark URL is the location of the app. So that's for me would be the um, 127.00 in my own app. This would be the location. And I think 3397 is just a randomly assigned, um, a randomly assigned, uh, what do I call that thing now? Randomly assigned, I'm coming. I want to be sure, port, yes, a randomly assigned port. So um, this is something of, uh, this is a niche of what we had um, for my own um, uh, presentation here. So um, I think I mentioned that of the um, damping, that of Delta, that of the length, and that of Omega. I have mentioned that today. Um, most of these are the same, except that instead of Hadley Shiny after IO, okay, that's just explanation. I think Hadley Shiny, and Hadley Shiny after IO is because he had um, he had pushed his um, Shiny app to the Shiny after IO um, platform. That's why that is like that. So updating the URL. Let's go back up there. Instead of having an explicit button, which I just complained about that most websites don't have if you want to bookmark the website, another option is to automatically update the URL in the browser. And this allows your user to use the user bookmark command in the in their browser or copy and paste the URL from the location bar. So how exactly can we do this? There's a snippet of code we might need to add to our Shiny app to be able to achieve this. And we'll be using the observe function and we would be writing these lines of code to be able to do that and how exactly are we doing that this part of the schools are going to be added to the server function side so let's see what happens when we have to run this this example three but well, before we go and check what i would do if we run it in our uh power studio um there's something you'd also notice when we do run it We have two possible ways we could do it, but we'll be going with the first one. Then we will try the other method afterwards. So I will run this now and we we'll see what we would get. Okay, so it's running. And um, voila, we have it here. Okay, why do I have to have this? I think because I did not stop the last session. Let me do this again. So we should have something different this time around. Okay, so if you notice, why do I still have this bookmark? Okay, the bookmark button is here, so let me take it off. Okay, do you see what I just did to take the bookmark off, button off? So it should work now. Yes, it should work now. Without the bookmark button, save selected. 
Okay, yes, we don't have the bookmark button anymore. And since we're not be needing it because it's now going to be done automatically. So let's have this and see what it looks like. So now we have this, how exactly can we bookmark the app? Oh, is this it? Yes, this is it. Do I have this in my Shiny? Okay, I noticed I don't have that snippet of code in my Shiny app here. So I have to add it. So I have to add this to this, this part of the code to my Shiny app. So this is it. Property keyboard, and we would be adding this to it. Okay. And let's stop this and rerun the app again. Okay. Oh, that's just going off already. Okay, so. Whenever we make any change, what happens? Do you notice this automatically change up here? So please, I need to switch my data device so that doesn't go off while I'm still here. So with automatic book bookmark, it's like if you refresh this, it'll come back exactly to this. That's the kind of the idea. Hello. Hi. Hello, can you hear me? Oh. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I guess you didn't hear me. Now saying so like with the automatic bookmark, the idea would be like when you refresh this, it'll come back exactly to this, like this figure. Um, this is it. So if you notice whenever I change anything, just look up here. When I change anything here, <laughs> it will automatically update the URL. So for me yeah. to automatically do this now, I could just bookmark this and it's bookmarked. Uh, no, this is what happens. I could have the bookmark in the, uh, there's a, a, a folder in this particular in this particular um, project where I can easily find my, my bookmark. Did I answer your question? If I didn't, please go ahead and ask again, sorry. I'm not sure, like click refresh, like when you refresh okay. this, let me refresh. I just refreshed. Like, does the same thing happen when you refresh? Like, yes, if you notice, um, the diagram is still the same. It's still the same thing. It's still 0 0.66, 0 0.7, yeah. 99, and 100. So it doesn't yeah, go. So, like, on the originals, so like on the first ones you did without the refresh, is that the same thing that happens? uh the best way i can know now is to go back and try those ones so just yeah let's experiment a bit so let me go back to the last example example two mm -hmm. and let me rerun this for now okay i notice i don't have my i don't have the button i can show in. so let me check i do have it there so let me stop this and run the app again yeah, so the bookmark button is there. So you're saying if we do this and we refresh, so let me refresh and see if it goes back to normal. Yes, it does. You're correct. You, okay. so I'm sure correct. Yeah. But when we have it okay, the other yeah. way around, go on, go on, please. Sorry. Oh, no, no. Because, yeah, that was what I was thinking it was doing. Because basically, like when it's changing, like it's changing the URL. So, like the URL. URL changes. So when you update it, it goes back to exactly what you put for the Omega and the Delta and dampening. So yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. So um with this, I think we have been able to see how this works. And um oh sorry about that. So I will be switching back to the next example. Okay, yeah. So we'll just test that. And you notice our URL is always very long. 
And so imagine we have a very complex shiny app and um, we have so many inputs. It means we'll have a very long URL. So what exactly can we do to um, avoid such situation? So to do that, we decided to, no, we decided, hardly decided to show us another way to do that. And um, okay, there's another way. And this time around, so far we've used the enable bookmarking post URL, which stores the states directly in the URL. It's a good place to start because they're very simple and it's very simple and works everywhere you might deploy your Shiny app. As you can imagine, however, the URL is going to get very long if you have a large number of inputs, which I just said. So what will you do at this point in time? For these cases, you might instead want to use enable bookmarking equals server. So this time around, what happens? This saves the state to an .rds file on the server. This always generates a short opaque URL, but requires additional storage on the server. So the question that came to my mind at this point, which I wish if we were many, if we we're more than a number currently, would have been quite an interesting um, thing to prove is um, when the server would this be in case I have deployed the Shiny app um, on a, or maybe Shiny apps that I, where would these be saved? The server is to be saved in, is it Shiny app that I use server or, I still don't understand this part. Do you have an idea what this would mean? I'm not fully sure, honestly. Okay. Okay, no problem. So um okay, I think I see something. Shiny apps that I doesn't currently so does not currently supported. Okay, this is one error I spotted, which I wanted to correct in the mastering shiny book. I think I just saw it again. I would just pen it down so I can come back to it. And we could correct. I think that English is not correct. This is not going to support it server side bookmarking. I think that should be supports. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you yeah, need to try this point. out. Yeah. So you need to try it out locally. If you do so, you set, you will see that the bookmark button generates URLs like this. So we would want to try this and see what happens. So I think I just answer, I just see, I just, I've seen that this answers the question that um, when you're using Shiny Apps at IO, you most likely will not be able to save, like you might not, it doesn't currently support the server side bookmarking. So I think this answers the question. I wish we could ask if um, you're able to um, deploy your Shiny Web app, maybe on another platform, will one be able to bookmark, um, bookmark this? I think we could ask this question during the Shiny conference and see what answer we get. Um, are you going for the Shiny conference, if I may ask? Going to attend online? Yes, it's like March, right? I think it's like yes, March, it's March. Yeah, 15th yeah. or 17th. Yeah, I'm gonna go, yeah. Okay, so you'll be there physically? You'll well, there no, physically. attend online. <laughs> okay, yeah. so when you said you're going attend to go, so I need to... Yeah. Okay, okay. So um, um, for this um, other part where we are going to be enabling bookmark using the server side, we would just have to tweak something in the Shiny app um, um, code or snippet of code. So what we just do, I'd written that already. So I don't want to, I'll just um, comment the other one and uncomment this and see what happens. Enable bookmarking. Okay, this is correct. So okay, let's run this. Stop and run this app and let's see what happens. Let's see if selected. Okay, that's all for us. Yes, it does. Okay, so I'm going to make this bolder. So do you notice something about the URL that something changed? Yeah, so instead this? of having the inputs, it's just the state ID. Yeah, yeah. so that is what changed this time around. And we've seen this is actually what it becomes. We then get to, um, let's now see in our working directory, directory if we can find something of that nature there. So I don't know if you can see my working directory. Can you? Uh, Is it part of the things I'm sharing no. currently? Okay, you know what? I'll stop sharing and I'll reshare. Just give me a few seconds. Okay. So, um, hey, I'll... Lucio. Uh, Lucio just joined. Oh, Hi, interesting. Everyone. It's nice to have you here, Lucio. I uh, you know you're committed to different um, book clubs, so. Well done. You're welcome. 
So can you see the third part, um, the third window of this part, the third window where I am now? Yeah. Yeah. Do you notice, yeah. Do you, do you see the second part, the one that has 727 as a date modified? Do you see that part? Did you see this? Where my okay. cursor is right now? Yeah, yeah. It says, it says F D C O eight A seven eight seven. Okay, I just need to have that um in mind. So when we go back to check the browser, we'll be able to spot that same thing. And if you notice about um one hundred and eleven bytes, I want to also con put uh put into consideration the size of that bookmark. So uh we could actually ask a question of this nature during the Shiny conference, or maybe even in the Mastering Shiny um, Slack room and say, okay, when we have to um, save our bookmark in the server side, um, what if, is, it, is there a, a possibility of the, um, of the bookmark being, a, being uh, the bookmark size uh, being a large file, or where exactly will it be stored if Shiny apps or IO does not currently support it in other um, possible, um, 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 storage settings, or let me say, um, server uh, providers, will they be able to have a space to store it? And Lucia, if you have answers to this question, please, you could just um, answer and tell us. And if you don't understand what I'm asking right now, you could just tell me I could recap again. Um, I didn't understand the question. You didn't, right? Yes, I did not. Okay, you did not. Okay, so... Um, but I'll come back to the question, but I just want um, Lydia and you to also notice something. Do you notice that that's the same thing here? Lydia, do you notice that same file, whatever I just showed you now, is the same thing here? Do you notice it's uh, like the, this okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. and this are the same yeah, thing? The so this is where it is saved on my own local machine. It is saved here. So if I click here, I would get that URL. This is it. I don't know if you can see what's just popped up. Did you see what popped up? Like I can uh, get the URL here. Okay, don't worry. I would click I on something. I see like the R file. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. You you'd see it in my con console now. Okay. Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Did you see it at the bottom parts? Um, mm -hmm. it's just uh, how do I make this bigger? Okay, do you see this part that says imputes read RDS? Yeah. Can you see it? I am actually moving my. Oh, yeah. Yeah, on the console. Yes, on the console. In the console, right? Yes, 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 in the console. So that file was what I clicked on. So when I clicked on that file, this is what opened up. And so I just wanted you to see that. Okay, back to you, um, Lucio. So this is the question I asked before you came in. And um, me and Lydia were trying to like, Think of how to answer that question but we couldn't so um i am asking you maybe you have maybe from your experience working with shiny you have an idea of how this works so um we got to this point where we had seen like about three methods which we could bookmark a shiny web app the first method involves us um i'm recapping already the first method involves us um, creating a button and with this button, when we click on this button, we have like a URL generated, and this URL will have every um, every input or every um, value, every every slider input value, or every widget input widget value recorded. Okay, um, Lucia, have you read this chapter? Let me start from there, so that I will know if you're getting anything I'm saying. No, I read it like three months ago, but I don't oh. recall the whole thing. Okay, I, no I, I don't remember so, that you can um, like encode variables of the inputs in your Shiny app via the URL, but I didn't know, for example, that such files were recorded into a .rds file. Okay, so um, this is what happens actually. There are about three methods for bookmarking. So the first method would not record it in the RDS file in the server side. No, it won't. But the second method will also not do the same thing. But the third method will. Why would the third method do that? Because we are actually saying enable bookmarking where in the server. You see that in this code here. So we're saying for this first one, we're saying enable bookmarking in the URL. Well, if we come down towards this part, you see we're saying enable bookmarking in the server side. And since we're saying you should enable bookmarking in the server side, 
we are saying that um, you could store up this thing in the server side. So once we say we want it in the server side, that is why you have the RDS object in the server side containing every of the value we've imputed in our impute widget. Do you get now, Lucio? Yeah, yes. Okay. So um, the question I was now trying to ask, since you said you read the book three months ago, was um, in a situation whereby, because Shiny Apps to so IO said they don't, um, they don't, where did we see that just, okay, this is it. Can you see this part where I just highlighted? I see no highlight. Ah, yes. Okay. That's oh, really... Shiny apps that are you does not currently support server side bookmarking. So you will need to try this out locally. If you do so, you will see the bookmark button generate URLs like um, this statement means shiny apps or IO does not support uh, um, server side bookmarking. So my question was, are there any other um um uh, should I say hosting platform that will support the server side bookmarking? Sorry, um, I'm not really a web developer, so don't mind my. Oh, yes. Uh, that will support server side bookmarking for a shiny app. Do you have an idea of any? I don't know if it's going oh, okay. for a specific shiny app, but I, I do know that it is possible to, for example, you have an application and then to, uh, sorry, and that application is hosted in some. Sorry, you can access such application via some URL. And you can, similarly to, to this case of bookmarking, you can then add some information, some uh, variable length string to the URL so that such a string gets mapped onto some specific value of the inputs in the, in the app. So I don't know that it is possible for other kinds of applications, but I don't know if Shiny can handle it. However, you know, there is probably an easy way to do it because uh, if you open any application, sorry, any, any Shiny app, you can access the values of the, of the, what do you call it? Of the values of the inputs via the Shiny JavaScript object. And then you can save such values into a JSON file. And then perhaps like, activate some, sorry, create some button so that once you upload the JSON file that recorded your inputs into some specific values, then to set such inputs into those values that are in your JSON file. So maybe you cannot do it via the URL, but it seems pretty easy to implement via a simple, a simple upload and download mechanism. Okay. Okay, I will still go through this video and get the full gist of what you said. Um, okay, so uh, thank you for that. I, I think that would really help me digest what is here. Um, so um, this is the next part we are right now. We have just talked about this when you came in. Um, that's how the third way of um, bookmarking a shiny app. Um, but the question I have was that. Um, in a situation where the files are becoming, would the files ever at any point become so big if we're using this method? Because we saw that it was just 111 bytes on my machine and because it's not really a complex app. So if it's a more complex app, will the, um, the file be, be larger than what we saw, larger than being in bytes? And if that's the case, will it cause some drawbacks by making the shiny app slower uh, that's another question I would love to um, research on or ask um, uh, advanced Shiny app users or my fellow colleagues that I hear that have more experience using Shiny app than, than I do. So my next, my, the next chapter, the next part of this book will be, okay, before we go there, the main drawbacks with server bookmarking is that it requires files to be saved on the server and it's not obvious how long this needs to hang around for if you're bookmarking complex state you, you, and you never delete these files, your app is going to take up more and more big space over time. If you do delete the files, some old bookmarks are going to stop working. Okay, so um, bookmarking challenges. Uh, automated bookmarking relies on the reactive 
graph it sees the inputs with the saved values uh let me see how i can because i think i have this summarized somewhere no let me just go through it it's not much um they replace all reactive expression and outputs which will yield the same app that you see as long as your app reactive graph is straightforward this section will cover some of the cases which need a lead through extra care so um these are peculiar cases where we could have challenges with bookmarking we're about to go through them now in a situation where your app is a basic uh, is not so complex an app it could still be a straightforward approach to bookmarking so the first um, scenario that could be a challenge is if your app uses random numbers the result might be different even if all the inputs are the same and if it's really important to always generate the same numbers you need to think about how to make your random process reproducible i think that's where we have to that is when if you're doing a normal data analysis project that's when you have to use the set dot seed but this situation you are actually going to be using repeatable the function repeatable um so you can check the, the documentation for more details and for the next one if you have tabs i want to bookmark and restore the active tab make sure to supply an id in your call to tab set panel i think we Touch something on ID when um, Lucio Lucio did that. You want to say something, Lydia? Okay. okay. Uh, I no. thought I had. Okay. Uh, if there are inputs that should not be bookmarked, this is a third scenario. If the input that should not be bookmarked, um, they contain private information that should not be shared. Include a call to set bookmark exclude. So if you add the function as I and see the bookmark, um, that particular um, page will be excluded from being bookmarked. And um, if, what else again? Okay, and if you have some inputs you don't want to bookmark, you can do the same thing by adding um, the specific inputs you don't want to be bookmarked. For the fourth scenario, if you're manually managing reactive states in your own reactive values objects, um, which will be discussed in chapter 16, we'll be taking that chapter, and you will need to use the on bookmark function and on restore callbacks to manually save and load your additional states. So for this, we are told to see additional bookmarking for more details. So um, did I go through this? I think I did check it, but I did not totally get everything I was reading here. It seemed a bit abstract. So I said I was still going to go over it some other time again. So please class permits me, sorry, please um, court permits me to um, check it again at some other time, maybe in chapter 16, we could talk about it. Um, I'll go back to this and continue. So we have about two exercises. Um, Lucio, you said you've gone through this book three months ago. And I don't know, when you got to this point of the exercises, what did you do? How did you go about it? And um, before that, uh, could I show you what I meant about the JSON oh. file? Okay, let me just stop sharing so you can show us. I really want to see it. Okay. So I am using Lydia, are you still there? Lydia, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, good. Good. Go on, Lucio. Okay, so I am using as an app example, uh, one that we already saw in chapter 10. It's basically okay. this this simulation of multiple pages. So okay. really the app or really the inputs of the app are only these these buttons, this action button. Page yes. 12, page 221, 23, and 32. And, and yes. when I when I what I was telling you is that for example, once we go to the to the app or sorry, to the to the page for this app, and that is this one, we can we can activate the console via a control shift J. And over here we have access to this object shiny. And it has many different okay. properties, but one of them is the shiny app and okay. then we can look for the what are the input values of our application for example once i wow. access that we can see over here these are the inputs that the four okay. buttons buttons that i mentioned uh and their initial and their current value uh, oh, they sorry. are zero be now because i haven't clicking to them so let me click into them okay so now i run again this and okay. you can see this value has changed. Wow. Wow. So what I was telling you is perhaps if you want to implement a sort of bookmark, uh, maybe not using the URL, but uh, downloading and then uploading a JSON file, 
you could you could use this this uh, JavaScript code in order to access what are the values the inputs that you want to let's say to bookmark. Okay. And then in such information you you write it into some JSON file, and once you upload your JSON file, you could do something like shiny set input value, and you put over here right there. The ID for your input in this case is page 12. Page okay. 12. And then you can put the value that you want such input uh, to have. Okay. In this case, probably it will do nothing because it's just clicking a button. But but the main idea, right, is you first download some JSON with these input values. And okay. then you simply upload such JSON and use this. Can you show us an example of uploading such JSON? Can you just save a JSON file and show us how that is done, please, if you can? Uh, if not, we could do that next class. Uh, how to write a JSON file? Should we do that next class? So I don't. No, I remember any... having done it in another. Uh, I mean, basically, uh, no, I have the code in okay. another app of no, mine, but no I, don't, I don't recall it right now. Right now. I, I, I kind of get what you're trying to do. So um, next class, you're still going to show us, but you're going to take permission from, um, well, I mean permission, because she is the one that has the whole time to herself. So she would maybe give you like five to 10 minutes to also show us this, because I really want to do this. I want to use this uh, method to build shiny apps because it looks so cool. It makes me look more like a developer or a <laughs> programmer yeah. than a statistician or a data scientist. Like, okay, let me say statistician. Okay, so um, we'd like to see you do this again next class so that we can go over it again and understand it better. How about that? Okay, yes, I like, have we want you to save, we want you to save a JSON file. We want you to save a JSON file and show us how you can use a JSON file to re to replicate a a page, a shiny web page that has um, inputs. Uh, actually, I have already done that. For example, in okay. this application, I have this is a shiny app as well. I have some inputs. Maybe they don't look as such. But, wow. uh, no, wait. Wow. Uh, I changed the, this, this is the updated. I needed the older one. But the main idea is that, that in my code, I, I will explain it in detail in the next meeting. But yes, there is a, um, a button to download the state of the input of the app. And over here, you can upload. And all of the app gets updated with such a specific inputs. I, I will I will rewrite the code for, for what you need, okay? For next meeting. Okay. Okay, wow, this is nice. Wow. Wow, this is nice, yeah. Okay, so um, we are going to be taking this part of the exercise. Lydia, are you still there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, good. So... And yeah, you were saying, and yeah, it's no problem with Lucio going over the JSON next week, if that's... No, 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 you're actually going to take your chapter, but if there's any time mm -hmm. left, he's going to then show us one or two things so we can still take some um, some knowledge or some piece of information from him and how to get things done yeah. like a programmer. Yeah, no worries, so thank sounds you. good. Thank you for accepting. Okay, so I'm um, coming, Lucio. Let me just go back and present, and we should round off, round up the so session. Okay, so we have gone to the point of the exercise, and to be honest, at this point, I didn't know how to go about it. Um, it was just uh, I didn't really get it. So, um, Lucio, did you do this exercise thing? Um, and can you? But when I saw the codes for the solution, I kind of understood what was going on there. But could I have written it myself at the stage of my uh, arrow journey? Maybe not. But I know that I'm improving every day, and I know there's a time this would be easy for me to do. So this is the exercise. So do you guys want me to just show you the solution, or Lucia, will you tell us something about solving it? Yeah, well, I haven't solved them, so perhaps we can okay. look at the solutions. Okay, no problem then. So we would go to R and check the solutions. So this is exercise one. This is the solution. And um, let me reduce this. Okay. 
And if we notice, this is. Um, should we see your R, your R Studio? Yes, I am actually seeing my R Studio. Can you see it? No, I see the book. Okay, I would um, stop sharing and reshare again. Okay. I'll show this and this, then share. Can you see it now? Okay, still loading. Oh, I ain't taking so long. Um, why this is taking so long? So it's still loading here. Your screen share is loading, so I don't know why it's taking so long. Maybe I'll just stop it and try again. And come in. Okay, so um how about now? Oh, still loading. Okay, maybe I'll just go ahead and share just the hour since this is taking so much i don't know why it's happening this way i've done it before um, um yes yes okay so um is this is the arrows to the visible now no it's still loading it says you it still oh. says you've started screen sharing but i can't see anything yes it says your screen share is loading and I don't know why it's taking so long. I don't. Okay. Yes, it's working now. The yeah. screen share. Yeah. Is sharing. So um, this is the solution. So interestingly, um, ambient is actually a function in R, and this function needs to this um sorry ambient is a package in R. Sorry, ambient is a package in R, and this package needs to be installed if it's not already installed on your machine. So install it, then you would be able to build the work on the exercise. Now, interestingly, I can't access that for now. Let's see if I stop sharing and we share again, I'll be able to access the exercise. So we can look at it and give it a fair short. Okay, let's see if it works this time. Okay, let's hope it works, let's hope it works. But this is what the exercise is saying. Generates app for visualizing the result of ambient uh, noise simplex. Your app should allow the user to control the frequency, the fractal, the lacunarity, and gain, and be bookmarkable. So, um, can you see that part? I just read this part to you. This is what we're trying to do. Oh, we have just eight minutes to go. I thought I was going to use like 30 minutes today. I just want us to go through this. So um, from the solution I saw in the book by Maya Gans, uh, this is what is there. Can you see my R Studio? No, not still the book. Oh, now, yeah. Okay. So um, you'd notice something that um, our UI is a function. And let's go and find out what happened to the... And our bookmark is actually going to be on the URL and not on the server side this time around. So what exactly was done here? And the UI side, the exercise needs us to be able to select the, um, to select the, the user has to, should be able to control the, sorry, let me make this uh, on the same, on different pages so I can be able to access both the exercise and the book. So I believe um, both are, are visible, right? uh yeah but it's like the okay yeah okay so um so the, the user should be able to um access make control the frequency the fractal the lacunarity and gain and if you notice that's what happened here so here we have the slider inputs for frequency the slider inputs for fractal the slider that you for gain 
Okay, now I notice that the slider input for lacunarity is not here. Probably we would find out why that is so. So um, with that, the user can be able to control that. But what happened at the server side? That is where you, um, the whole thing really is um, going down. So we have this um, particular function in this package ambient. And I think um, as a, we go through the R4DS book, you see this used a lot in the R4DS book. And this is a, a function that um, houses uh, um, most of the things that the user will be able to control, the frequency, the fractal, and the gain. And so with that, we would be able to get certain output. And that is what resulted to this when we run it now. So let's run that. But then before we go, oh, this is it here. No, 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 this is not it. I did not stop the last app that was, let me go to my console, I'm coming. Okay, stop all this and run this app. Okay, can anyone tell me why this is this? Oh, I ran the wrong app, sorry. Exercise one. So now I think I can run the app and get a desired result. Yes, I have my desired result. But if you notice, we don't have lacunarity, but we have frequency, we have factor, we have gain. But before we go, we could on our own check the ambient package. I was going through it, but did not complete it. This is the ambient package here. Um, could drop this. We could check it on our own and be able to come up with what exactly is going on there and understand it better. So we understand the server side well enough. Um, back to this. This, this, this. Okay. So let's Okay, this should be it. Okay, yes. So um, that is that for the ambience. So this is what it looks like. And um, what exactly does this do? It's still a mystery. I did not unravel it before this class. I'm sorry for that. I thought I would be able to complete that before joining. I just didn't unravel it. But um, looks like something in math students will understand. Lucio, do you understand what's going on here? Do you mean about the picture getting created? Yes, yes, the the, the outputs we are getting. Uh, no. Okay, okay, no problem. Let me see, okay. So um, we could still check the package to understand more. I'm sorry, I should have done, dude, I should have done the, the, the on the ticking and do all the researching. But the major thing is to see how this bookmarking, um, uh, how bookmarking has been applied to this. And you could, if you notice, you'd have seen something going on here. Every out, every input we change gets updated in the bookmark in the um, in the URL. It gets updated immediately. So we could have our inputs stored, um, maybe through the server. Okay, this would not be stored on the server side now. This will be on the URL, unless we make the URL server, that's when we'll have it on the server side. So for that, I think I'll like to try the console thing that you did. Um, I don't know how to do it. Okay, this is it, right? Okay, so if I do this, what will I do next? Is this what you did, um, Lucio? Uh, yes, uh, control shift J. Okay, let me, let me cancel this. Is this not it, control shift J? Yes, uh, you click in console and you can control, access the okay, control the shift. Shiny object. Okay, this is it, right? Yes. Okay, I think I'm getting an error. I don't know. A listener indicated an asynchronous response by returning. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, many times there are errors that uh, okay. they are really unconsequential to, our, to us. Um, maybe. One of these days, we'll set up a class, and Lucia, you take us through your um, the method you use for making doing this sort of thing. And um, Lydia, if you're interested, we can make it one of our um, book club days. But you, if you if if it's, the course is not interested, we could make it a day outside our court um, discussion days. Lydia, we'd be interested in seeing how this works. This particular app, yeah, sure. Okay, so yeah. um, and by the way. Oh, by the way, I have to drop for another meeting. 
in a couple of minutes. Awesome. But no thank problem. you for the presentation. Right. Bye, guys. Bye. So um, for the exercise two, I um, okay. So exercise two, we could check this. I also didn't do this myself. I had to check the solution. So I have to say it's my yeah, it's my guidance that gets this too. She did this. So I checked the exercise. And this is what it looks like. Um, well, this is quite basic. This is quite basic. No, this is it, yeah, sorry. So I will be running this app now. What exactly does the app look like? So, okay. So the app, based on the exercise, uh, should be done in no time. The next couple of minutes, it should be done. So the app, we are, we make a simple app that lets you upload a CSV file, then bookmark it, then upload a few files, then look in shiny bookmark. How do the files correspond to the bookmarks? And how can you use int? You can use read RDS, look inside the kick file that shiny is generating. So um, Lucio, do you have an idea where this kick file will be stored? It's a cache of kick. Uh, which file? This one here. Okay, I think I have put this out. Sorry, I am coming. I think I was reading something. I guess you didn't see it. This is what I was reading a couple of minutes ago. This exercise too, this is what I was reading a couple of minutes ago. Um, make a same channel app that lets you upload a CSV file, then bookmark it. Upload a few files, then look in shiny bookmarks. How do the files correspond to the bookmarks? You can use read RDS to look inside the cake file. The is it the, the cake file, the hack, the hack file that shiny is generating. So do you know how to get this done? Because I did not know where to find this files. Do you have an idea? Mm, no, okay, no problem. Idea is, for example. When, when you use the upload button, okay, uh, I think over there you can access some local paths where Shiny is temporarily uh, saving files. So okay. maybe you can we can use such path in order to include it because I I don't know uh, we where, to upload. where we're, we're to upload RDS files are getting saved if in your we computer just... or or what. Okay, we just uploaded the a file. So let's see. I know my working directory, so I'll just go to my working directory and we'll check. Okay, I've seen my working directory and I can find the I can find it. Okay. Okay. There's a bookmark and this is what it looks like. Can you see it? On my console, can you see it on my console? Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so this is what is on my console. So this code came out. I think that is what represents this whole thing. I don't know if that's what that exercise was meant to do. Let me bookmark and see if we get the same result. Yes, we got the same results. Yes, we got the same result. If you look at what was here, and the same thing, it's the same thing that, no, it's not the same. It's not. The same. But it's what happens same. when you read uh, such RDS files? That is, if you execute such uh, such line in your console, the last line. Okay, so let's do that. Search. Is that what you are saying? Search yes. R. Yeah, yes. I think uh, they are telling you to. I think you need to close the app. Uh, oh, oh, execute oh. that line. Input equals r read rds imputes equals read rds and file equals i think this should be the file okay i guess we copied it let's hope it works Will you need an apostrophe? I think so. What do you think? 
Does it need to be? Uh, probably yes, because of escape characters. Okay. Okay, so let's run this. Oh, Although, I could not find such. You will probably only need the, the part eight, C, nine. Maybe run again the app. No, uh, the function, the function such RDS. Uh, yes, because find... it's only read RDS, but, but maybe you can run the app again. And when you get such the such line of code that said input uh, equals read RDS, and, and we had the the actual path for the file, uh, maybe copy that and then run okay. it. Okay, I'm coming. Let me check. Okay, okay so we have this, and. Um, we have this, so we've copied this. Um, we have this copied already, and then. No, 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 I, I meant the part um, where there was a line of code in your console that appeared. Yeah. That said yeah. input. Do you remember how to? Yeah. yeah, I saw it. This is it, right? Yes, could you copy that? Okay, if I copy that, okay, no problem. I just copied it. Yeah, I copied it already. I think I have to stop this. Yes. Then put it back here. So let me find it. So where is this input? Okay, no, that's not what we're looking for. It just gives us like a list of all the inputs. So what we want to do is we want to we want to search for uh, the the RDS file, right? No, that, that's it. I mean that's um well it's a list, but it seems that RDS is actually a JSON because lists sorry our lists are the equivalent to JavaScript objects, uh, and those are precisely JSON files. So it seems that such input value that is the, the actual content of, of that dot rds document is the json file that represents which is the id of the input and which is its value okay so it, it seems that it has encoded the information for the app in, in the same way that i was going to to present it in in the next meeting right for for the demo that you requested okay. I think this is it. Yeah, I've seen it now. This is it. It's the same thing with what is here. Do you, do you see what I'm, sh I'm showing right now? Can you see it? And uh, dollar like this, the file? The shortened version of the URL, the generated random, um, uh, should I call them digits slash letters? It's the same thing that's here. Um, it's created a RDS file in the in the server side, and um, this is what it looks like. It's giving us what exactly is there. Like, okay, it's a CSV file that's stored. This is the size. This is the type. Is that a text or a CSV file? And that's the data part. So this data part is actually on my machine, and I saw it. So I think um, with that, we've seen what the two exercises are like, and um, I think we've come to the end of today's class. Uh, the next class will be taken by um, Lucy, no, Lydia. Um, and she'll be talking about tidy evaluation and we'll be applying the tidy vast function in Shiny. So tidy evaluation is a feature of many tidy vast function and you will need to learn about it if you want to allow the user to change variables in deeply pipelines or ggplot2 graphics. I really look forward to this chapter and um, I hope we all go um, go over this chapter before coming to the next uh, session. Thank you so much for coming around, Lucio. And in case you want to say something, let me let you to go ahead. Um, uh, not really. Uh, thanks. Um, see you next week. Oh, same here, and Lucio. Gladly, would like to see you next week. So, um, I look forward to the day you're going to show me how you use the um, developer console to um, do amazing stuff with R and. Um, Maybe look forward to seeing how you set up the Visual Studio code and how it works.
how you um, use VS Code to do actually to, to do. if you want to know that okay you can look at the at the at the recordings that we did in the uh, Java, JavaScript for our book lab. I think okay. that one last year, but they, they are already on YouTube. Over there you okay. can learn a little what bit quotes? about what, what, what quotes specifically? Uh, there is only one. <laughs> Interesting. Actually, after this book, I actually look forward to either going for JavaScript for R or um, mastering outstanding UI and is it outstanding shiny UI interface or something by uh, this guy? I think he's a Swedish, um, David Grandjean. I think if I'm not wrong with the name, I look is, forward to reading that book after this. There is also an active cohort right now. Whoa. For that book. I don't know if I'll be able to manage this two cohorts at the same time. So I was thinking it's a step at a time. But um, if I'm able to go over more chapters of Martian Shiny, then I would, I think I would join the Outstanding Shiny um, in uh, that other quote, the active quote. Uh, yeah. Let me just see how I can walk around that, my time and all. Yeah. So, Lucio, maybe, I. Only, go only on, a last comment. This. Maybe if, if it is a matter of time, I understand. But if it okay. is a, a matter of. Perhaps you, you don't feel like you know enough about Shiny. Uh, yeah. Then it, it, it isn't really an issue because we, okay. really are, we really aren't looking at a, like very complicated Shiny concepts. We're only in the in the second okay. chapter right now. So I, wow. I, would, I, I would recommend you to join if you find the time. I will find the time. Just like you said, those two uh, points you mentioned actually the two reasons i just want to focus on this before i go to the next one so i will pick up as much as i can pick here so when i get there things will not look so 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 strange but i want to say thank you for encouraging me i think i would um sit down look at my it itinerary and look for another time i could add and join that course since you're already on that course i, I think that'll make it make it more interesting so um thank you so much for that encouragement um, so for today, I think we are done and we look forward to seeing each other again next week. Thank you for your time, Lucio. Have yes, a wonderful you, rest of the day. Yeah, bye. Bye.